Delegua was described as a master of language, a captivating prose stylist, and a courageous journalist. He was the co-founder and chief editor of two years of the now defunct news magazine. Despite not having royal ancestry, he was raised in the palace as the son of a slightly prominent man, but he became a prominent figure in society as well as a threat to those who oppose the truth. On account of this, his magnificent story abruptly ended at the age of 39. Sumono Oladelegiwa was born on the 16th of March 1947 in Ileife during the reign of Oba Adesoji Adiremi. He attended the local authority modern school in Ileife and studied at Odudua College where his father worked as a laundry man. For his higher education, he traveled to the USA and earned a BA in English from Brooklyn College and enrolled in a graduate program at Fordham University. Before returning to Nigeria, he worked for the New York Times as a news assistant for four years, and upon his return, he began to work for Daily Times. In 1984, he joined forces with his fellow journalists Ray Ekbu, Dan Agbese, and Yakubu Mohammed to establish News Watch which was described as a magazine that changed the format of print journalism in Nigeria. Besides, it introduced bold investigative formats to news reporting. Before he was assassinated, he feared for his life because of the weight of the accusations leveled against him. He reported the interrogation to his friend Prince Tony Momo, the then Minister of Communications, but he dismissed it as a joke. Additionally, he discussed the matter with Admiral Augustus Aikomo, the Chief of General Staff, and he promised to examine it. However, he was killed by a parcel bomb, according to his son, Billy. It had the seal of the Nigerian Court of Hands, and it was addressed specifically to him in his home located in Ikeja, Lagos, while he was in his study with Kayode Shoyinka on Sunday 19th of October 1986. Unknown individuals delivered the letter to the security guard, who then gave it to Giwa's son, and in turn, he gave it to his father. This happened 40 minutes after Billy had just finished speaking on the phone with Colonel Halilu Akilu, who had been calling his home the day before to ask for directions. Daly was fatally injured when the package exploded on his lap. The loud noise temporarily deafened Shoyinka, who had excused himself to use the lavatory just before Giwa opened the package. Hurriedly, he was taken to the hospital, where he succumbed to his injuries and died. The assassination happened in the thief of numerous accusations and countless interviews by government security agencies for articles he published. Here is the story. On the 19th of September 1986, he received his first invitation from the State Security Service, SSS. He had written an article in which he called the recently established second tier foreign exchange market, SFEM. God's experiment and predicted that if the project results in failure, the citizens would stone their leaders in the street. Two SSS agents spoke with Giwa and recorded his statements. Later, Lieutenant Colonel Togo, the agency's deputy director, invited him to a meeting in his office. Thankfully, he indicated his optimism in the same article that the project will work considering the motivation of Babangida. Reports revealed that Togun informed Giwa that he found nothing inappropriate in his story. Incidentally, he was questioned by Colonel Halilu Akilu of the Directorate of Military Intelligence 
BMI over the telephone on the 16th of October 1986 regarding a claim that Daly had been discussing the shipment of weapons. This account was presented by Giwa's neighbor and co-worker Ray Eppel. The following day, Eppel went with him for the interview. This time around, he was accused of planning to write the other side of the story centered around Ebitu Okiwe, who was removed as chief of the general staff to General Babangida. In its October 20 issue, which went on sale on 13th of October 1986, the magazine had previously featured a cover article with the headline, Power Games, Okiwe Loses Out. On top of that, Togun held Giwa responsible for plotting with Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and the students to carry out a socialist revolution and plan to import arms into the country to execute it. He was equally charged with claiming that Newswatch would hire Alozi Oguogwaja, a police public relations officer who had blamed the military for carelessness during a student riot in early 1986 and had since been suspended. At his official apartment in Lagos, Alozi asserted that a bomb was disarmed by the police bomb squad on the 16th of October 1986. To corroborate this, Eku said that he discovered two bogging devices hidden within the covers of two books in his study. This was alleged because Giwa and Ekpo had promised to hire him if the police fired him. To date, the killer of Giwa is yet to be found and there are a plethora of unanswered questions concerning the male bomb that resulted in his death. Judging from the mysterious scenarios and the technological method of the assassination, one can presume that the powers that be were involved in it. On the 20th of October, the day following the bombing, the government called a press conference which was presided over by Augustus Aikum. After all the press photographers, foreign journalists and Nigerians who worked for foreign news media were ordered out, Aikum was unable to field questions from the remaining journalists. Ismail Aguazo the director of the SSS and Halilu Akilu provided account of what had happened between Delegiwa and their agencies. In their accounts, they stated that they just wanted to clear the air with Giwa. This came after they had been accused of the murder. After taking over the case file from his predecessor, Chris was the second officer to handle it. Years after retiring, he said that in determining the circumstances behind Dele Giwa's death, he did what any capable investigator would have done. Besides, he discussed his suspicions regarding Shoyinka, who was present at the crime site and was unharmed despite the force of the explosion. Shoyinka, in his response, criticized him for spreading deliberate falsehood. On top of that, he said that he was under pressure to name Babangida and Atiku as suspects even though he had no evidence connecting them to the crime. The removal of Chris Omiben from the case was a clear indication of the pressure. By the way, a special squad led by Assistant Commissioner of Police Abubakar Tisab was formed to look into the case. Tisav claimed that the authorities obstructed his efforts. He asserted that he was denied permission to interview significant players such as Tunde Togun, Ismaila Gowazo, and Halilu Akilu. What is more, his request to revoke the powers of these officers so that he could interview them and search their homes and offices for evidence fell on deaf ears. More fundamentally, he claimed that despite concluding his final report that there was sufficient circumstantial evidence to charge Togun and Akilu with conspiring to commit murder, the government still refused to make the two officers accessible for questioning. In his opinion, Giwa was killed because he believed Giwa was in the way of some powerful forces. 
What are the possible reasons for Giwa's assassination? A panoply of conspiracy emerged to explain why Giwa was assassinated as soon as the investigations hit a dead end. The Gloria Okon link has been one of the most well-known and most persistent. In 1985, Gloria Okon, a woman, was detained at the Amin Okano International Airport on suspicion of importing drugs. Soon after, it was reported that she had passed away in jail. The government set up a committee of inquiry to look into the situation. According to conspiracy theories, Gloria Okon was a drug mole for Ibrahim Babangida's wife when she served as Muhammadu Buhari's Minister of Defense. According to the hypothesis, Babangida escorted her out of custody and to the UK. This means that the news of her passing was spurious and when Giwa saw Gloria in the UK, she gave him her story. Allegedly, Giwa attempted to blackmail Ibrahim Babangida, the then military president, with this knowledge. This was why he killed him. Another conspiracy contended that Shoyinka may have been the one who detonated the bomb via remote control given the fact that he was not hurt by the explosion. Together with that, he was accused of fleeing the country while investigations were ongoing. He denied this claim in a statement. In 2001, General Ibrahim Babangida was asked to appear before a national human rights panel regarding the assassination of Giwa, but he declined to do so to allow for more inquiry. Later, Babangida, Akilu, and Togun moved to the court and won a ruling which prohibited the commission from calling them in for an appearance. The commission could have issued an arrest warrant for the trial, but the chairman said they decided against it in the overall interest of national unity. Although it is insufficient, the Nigerian government honored Delegiwa in 2008 by naming a street after him in Abuja, the federal capital territory. <music>